The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer, my God, in whom I take refuge, my shield, and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. Good morning. Good morning. On this last day of January, and um, we know there's some snow on the way, so we'll get you out of here hopefully before that starts. And in the meantime, we get to worship God together. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Welcome to you and to anyone who's watching with us online, worshiping with us online. It's good to be together in God's name. I want to mention a couple of things. We are having our Bible study Monday evening, and that's on Zoom. And uh, it'll be the last one. It'll be on the book of Revelation tomorrow. So I look forward to that at 6.30. Coffee hour and Zoom as usual today. Uh, Sunday school at 11 on Zoom and coffee hour at 11.30. And so uh, we welcome you. Uh, to be a part of the coffee hour and the children for Sunday school. Ash Wednesday is February 17th this year, so it's a couple weeks away, and we will have a service here, and we'll also um, have it on Facebook Live. And uh, after that, our Collegeville Trap Ministerium uh, will host online Lenten services on Wednesdays, uh, for Wednesday evenings, but you can watch them when you want to. And uh, it's a good, good to be a part of that group of uh, different churches of different denominations in this area and uh, to be blessed with worshiping with them as well and seeing how each church does things a little different, uh, but we worship the same God. Amen for that. I uh, just want to mention the blood drive, March 2nd and 3rd, not too early to sign up for that. And the tools for ministry workshops, which are online this year, and that is uh, March 13th, that following, um, second week of, second Saturday of March. Uh, so we, you can register uh, now for that as well, and there are some papers in the middle explaining that. And also we'll put something in the February newsletter about that so you can know how to register. So that's everything, thank you, and we're ready to continue our worship. Please stand for the call of worship. Jesus invites us to come away from all our daily tasks and worries. We come together to hear the word of our God. The word is a double-edged sword, which both comforts and challenges us. We are ready to open ourselves to God's teaching Let us walk together on the journey of faith. Where Jesus goes, we will follow. Please remain standing and put the children in the passing of the beach.
scripture reading is from Jonah chapter 3 verses 1 through 5 and 10. Then the Lord spoke to Jonah again. Go to that great city, Nineveh, he said, and warn them of their doom, as I have told you to do before. So Jonah obeyed. He went to Nineveh. Now Nineveh was a very large city with extensive suburbs, so large that it would take three days to walk around it. But the, but the first, very first day when Jonah entered the city and began to preach, the people repented. Jonah shouted to the crowds that gathered around him, Forty days from now, Nineveh will be destroyed. And they believed him and declared a fast. From the king on down, everyone put on sackcloth, the rough coarse garment worn in times of mourning. And when God saw that they had put their, a stop to their evil ways, he abandoned his plans to destroy them and didn't carry through. Please pray with me the prayer of illumination. O oh God, teach us your truth and increase our faith as we hear your word today. Today is our last Sunday in the series we've had this month about when God calls. And you just heard uh, reading from Jonah, the story of God calling Jonah. And now we're going to hear from the Gospel of Mark about God, Jesus calling the first disciples. And I'll let you to stand while I read the Gospel. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea where they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat, mending their nets. Immediately he called them. And they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. Here ends the reading. And you may be seated. Sometimes I've noticed we human beings like to give our opinions about things. Have you noticed that? and about what should be and shouldn't be and what's possible and what isn't and sometimes we are pretty sure of ourselves. People make judgments and often they turn out to be wrong. Human beings flying in the air, people said that will never happen. It was in December of 1903 that the New York Times published an editorial, an opinion, in which they said the effort to build a flying machine was a waste of money and time. Some people even said it was against God's will. A week later, the Wright brothers made their first successful flight at Kitty Hawk. 
By the way, the Wright brothers were the sons of a Brethren minister. And that's part of our heritage because the, the Evangelical Brethren Church united with the Methodists in 1968 uh, to become the United Methodist Church. So that's part of our heritage. And the father supported his sons in their efforts to build a flying machine. It didn't bother him uh, that people said God didn't intend humans to fly. That was just bad theology. You know, there's a lot of bad theology out there. Have you noticed that? <laughs> a lot of bad theology. This week, I, I saw on the news a woman being interviewed, and the reporter said something about a conspiracy theory she believed in. And the woman said, well, the story of Noah was a conspiracy theory. And I, I thought, no. <laughs> Who told you that? <laughs> That's just bad theology. Uh, but it, there's a lot of it out there. Uh, our God is the God of the possible. And I think that the Wright brothers' dad knew that. Another story about a judgment. One time, a teacher told a 16-year-old boy, you will never amount to anything. The boy was Albert Einstein. And that teacher was wrong. You know, he was a, like many gifted children, he didn't succeed in the educational system, but his teacher could not see the potential there. Henry Ford had a lawyer, and he was talking to his banker, and the banker told the lawyer not to invest in the Ford Motor Company. Because he said, the horse is here to stay, but the automobile is only a novelty, a fad. <laughs> Bad advice. He was pretty sure of himself. Decca Records famously turned down the Beatles for a record contract in 1962. And one of the executives said, we don't like their sound. And guitar music is on the way out anyway. In 2011, Forbes magazine predicted that Bitcoin would never appeal to very many people. Bitcoin today is estimated to have a total value of $638 billion. Appealed to somebody. It didn't appeal to me, <laughs> but it appealed to somebody. Impossible things that happened. People thought they were impossible, but they happened. And today's story in the Gospel of Mark and the story in Jonah both seem like they might have been impossible to imagine for people in that time. The Gospel of Mark tells us that when Jesus called his disciples, he just went up to them and said, follow me, and they just got up from their fishing business and left it and followed him. And that seems impossible. That doesn't seem like it would work. People just following someone who showed up, Simon and Andrew, and yet the story tells us. They got up and left their boats, their nets, James and John, and they went with Jesus and followed him. And if you would have stood there back in those days and said, these people, this, this teacher from an obscure town and these fishermen, uh, uneducated fishermen, are going to start a worldwide movement, people would have laughed at you. <laughs> and they would have said, that's impossible. But it happened. These were fishermen. They were fishermen all their lives. They came from families of fishermen. They probably expected to be fishermen for the rest of their lives. But they got up and followed Jesus. How did they do it? How did they get people so excited about God's love that they were willing to change their lives? These are just fishermen. They've never been anywhere. They're not leaders. All they know how to do is fish. 
They have no experience in creating an organization, in management, in public relations, in marketing, all those things, you know. If, if we wanted to do something like that today, we'd have to have a meeting with a lot of PowerPoints and, you know, a lot of research that would, would be presented and, uh, and so on. No management consultant would ever have hired them. But Jesus said, follow me. And then we have the story of Jonah. The Lord tells Jonah to go to Nineveh. Now you gotta understand, Nineveh is the enemy. The enemy. They are the bullies of the world. And Jonah doesn't like them. And so when the Lord tells Jonah, go to Nineveh and tell them to repent, Jonah says, nope. I don't want to go there. I'm not going there. <laughs> and he goes in the opposite direction. He goes in the opposite direction. And Jonah, Jonah says, you know what, they won't listen anyway. They won't repent. They're just bad people. I'm not going no way. Some of you might remember the TV show and the movies Mission Impossible. I watched that TV show when I was a kid. And it always starts with the secret agent getting a message on a tape, an audio tape, and it says, something they want him to do, and, and then it says, your mission, should you choose to accept it? And there's some crazy impossible thing that it's telling him to do all by himself. And the chance of him getting killed seems really high. And then the tape automatically self-destructs and gets, you see the smoke rising up from it. My husband Tom said he used to watch that show with his grandmother. And he remembers his grandmother saying, just once I'd like to see him turn it down. <laughs> I'd like to see him say, nope, that's just crazy. I'm not doing that. I'm going to go play some tennis today. <laughs> that's what she said. But he always accepts the mission, always. Jonah turned down the mission. He gets on a ship to go in the opposite direction. He is supposed to go north and east on land, but he goes south and west and gets on a ship <laughs> to go by sea. That's how much he doesn't want to do it. And there's a terrible storm. And Jonah figures out that God is doing this. And he tells the crew, it's my fault. God is angry. Just throw me overboard. Jonah would rather die than do what God has asked him to do. But you know the story, he doesn't die. He gets swallowed up into the belly of a great fish, and then the fish spits him out on dry land. And when we meet Jonah in today's passage in chapter three, the Lord tells him again what his mission is, go to Nineveh, and Jonah goes. He preaches to the Ninevites, in as harsh a way as he can. You are terrible sinners, he says. And God just wants to destroy you. If you don't repent, it's going to happen. And the last thing Jonah expects is for these awful people to repent. But they do. The story says they do. Another impossible thing has happened. And they repent, coming to God in sorrow for their sins. They are ready to hear from God. I think God knew that. Jonah didn't know that. They are tired of their sinful ways. They only needed to hear the invitation to change. And they were ready to do it. Mission impossible was possible. And apparently those fishermen in Galilee were also ready to say yes. They were ready for a new life. When Jesus calls them, they don't have to be asked twice. Maybe they perceived in him the presence of God. 
Or maybe they were just tired of the smell of fish. <laughs> maybe they were sitting there and saying, I wish I could do anything else. And Jesus came along. Yeah, I'm going with him. Let's see how that works out. They got up and they went with him. And they don't know how it's going to work, but they accept the mission. And they had the best teacher. Jesus knew that people were ready to hear the good news, that they were waiting for it. They were looking for God, and all they needed was someone to point them in the right direction. In our times today, we sometimes feel that calling people to become disciples is impossible. We don't believe that it can be done. Yet there is evidence that people are looking for God today. One study showed that in the age group of 18 to 30, 62% said that they pray, but only 35% said that they ever attend church. In another study, they asked people who didn't attend church why they didn't visit a church. And the most common answer was, no one had ever invited them. When God calls us to a mission, it is never impossible. Maybe we assume that people today don't feel that they need God, and that is just wrong. People today need God as much as ever. We need hope as much as ever. We need love in our lives as much as ever. We need a loving community as much as ever. We need to stop having so little faith in what we have to offer. John Wesley said, offer them Christ. Make the offer. They can say yes or no, but offer them Christ. In that show, Mission Impossible, the mission always did seem impossible, but you get to watch how the agent figures out what to do and how he carries it off. He always has some really cool gadgets and he's really smart. And so he has some secret weapons. He has stuff the other side doesn't have. Well, I don't know that we in the church are necessarily smarter than anybody else, but we do have a secret weapon. We have the Holy Spirit. We have God to help us. Whatever God calls us to do, we can do. Because all things are possible through Jesus Christ. But we can't do it alone. We need help. The mission is only possible when we let the Spirit of God work through us. And that can happen when we accept the mission. Our God is the God of the possible. You know, after Jesus died, was killed on the cross, some people said, this thing will die out. It will be impossible for his disciples to keep going after this. And they were wrong. They went and built a, built a worldwide movement. Our God is the God of the possible. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. invite you now to follow along this beautiful hymn which is really made for this passage we are today. Lord, you have come to the lake shore and uh, how many is okay if you want to do that as you listen?
As we come to prayer together, I'm happy to say that we have had some wonderful answers to prayer, and that some of the people we prayed for that, uh, that were sick are, have been getting better. Thank God for that. And uh, we're really happy to hear that Lendry has gotten rid of his trach, and he can live a different kind of life now because of that. Uh, and that's happy news. Um, and um, please uh, request also for Denise, um, who needs a better paying job and for her health. And so we will certainly pray for that. Uh, Let's pray that we are safe in the next couple of days, whatever happens uh, with the weather. And uh, it's just a normal part of winter, but uh, we hope people will be safe. And then, of course, uh, all of the all of the, the, the crises we're experiencing as a nation, the pandemic and um, the crisis of conflict, extremism, and so on. Uh, let's be in prayer together about those things as well. Let us pray together. Gracious God, we are so thankful that you have answered our prayers. For those we have prayed for your healing that are recovering, we give you thanks. Lift up Denise and ask you be with her in, in her health and in trying to uh, support herself. We ask your blessing on her today. God, is, it is winter in more ways than one. We, we pray that uh, people will be safe in the next couple of days, that they'll make good decisions without driving or shoveling. Lord, we pray for our leaders, for those who serve us. We will grant them grace and wisdom. We pray for our uh, first line workers. Some will have to be out in the snow. We ask the grace, your grace for them. Uh, for those people who are considered essential, we pray for their safety. Lord God, we know that many are ill with COVID, even at this moment, many are still dying. We pray for them and their families. Lord, help us to defeat this disease. Grant that those in leadership, those who have the job of, of looking after public health, that they will <coughs> be able to do the impossible, that you will make things possible that we did not proceed before, and bless them in their work. Pray for our leadership, for our democracy. Oh God, give us hearts for peace. Those who would do violence, oh God, change their hearts. Let us find ways to solve problems with dialogue, with listening to each other, and if necessary, restraining those who would do harm. We pray for law enforcement all those who work to protect us, that you will be with them. Oh God, our list is long of human problems and people who need your help, but we know that your heart is big, that you love each and every human being you have made as your child. What a privilege it is to serve the God of love. Oh God, give us the courage to believe that your mission is possible to 
announce your good news to this world, to offer Christ to people, to offer hope, and to offer the life of a disciple of Jesus Christ, in which the bottom line is love. What a privilege it is to serve you. Sometimes we say no, but you keep calling us. Help us to say yes. And now we pray in the name of the one who calls us, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, and forever. Amen. Thank you for your, for those who've already said yes, have already said yes to serving God in so many ways. I know you have. I've seen it. And we thank you for that. Thank you for supporting this collection of socks this January. That will make a difference to people who need them. A real difference. So we thank you. If you uh, have an offering to give today, you can place it in the offering plate. Uh, down in front here on your way out. And those uh, worshiping online, you, you can go to our web, website, Edinburgh UMC, and find a button to click there to make a gift. May we have the courage and the grace to say yes when Jesus calls us and to get up immediately and serve as the disciples did. I invite you to stand now and pray with me the prayer of dedication and thanksgiving. Let us pray. Oh God, all that we have and all that we are is a result of your love and divine grace. Bless these gifts and let our lives be a thank offering to your grace and love. Amen. Are you maybe seated while we listen to this thing?